Welcome back everyone. This is Pastor Frank with the End Times Research Ministry. Today is the 17th of May 2018. And one of the signs, one of the many signs that Jesus left us had to do with diseases. And I've been issuing warnings in relation to this prophecy for many, many years. And over the course of the years, the different warnings that I've given about the different diseases have come to fruition, not because I'm some prophet or anything, but because it's already written in the Bible that these things were going to happen in the last days. And all I'm doing is pointing these things out. So when it comes to pestilence, for example, and we heard of cases of Ebola that are coming faster and faster and more people being affected, it's really easy to predict that this disease, although it seemed to be eradicated, will be coming back again, and it has. And I want to give you the latest information on that. Now, I've given you many warnings about these different types of diseases that are coming out now and mutating and making it extremely difficult for the medical people to get a grip on. This article from the BBC came out 48 minutes ago. DR Congo Ebola outbreaks spreads to Mandeka City. So let's hear what the report had to tell us. The Ebola outbreak in DR Congo has spread from the countryside into a city, prompting fears that the disease will be increasingly hard to control. Health Minister Olwai Ilunga Kalanga confirmed a case in Mabandaka, a city of a million people about 130 kilometers 80 miles from the area where the first cases were confirmed earlier this month. The city is a major transportation hub with routes to the capital Kinshasa. 44 people have been infected and 23 people are known to have died. Ebola is a serious infectious illness that causes internal bleeding and often proves fatal. It can spread rapidly through contact with small amounts of bodily fluid, and its early flu-like symptoms are not always obvious. So do you remember the last time that we saw the Ebola outbreak that came from Africa? It spread to many different countries, including the United States, where they flew in one of the nurses that were treating some of the patients over there in Africa. At this point, no one can really say how well this is contained or what may happen as far as it's spreading like it did in the previous years. All we know that it is, it's back again, and we know that this is one of those plagues that are really difficult. It starts to spread. But the bottom line is this. Jesus told us that in these last days, we would see pestilence, and obviously this is a prime example of one of those diseases that he was warning us about. So the last time that this happened, there was a lot of problems because it did spread so fast throughout the different communities. And when people were traveling, they were spreading Ebola without even knowing that they were spreading it until the government agencies saw what was happening and they finally put a stop to it. But, but not until many people had passed away. So let's watch the developments that are taking place right now in this city. And it is, by the way, as you saw in this article, one of the major transportation hubs. So that can't be good if some of these Ebola patients start moving around like they did in previous years and infecting other people. So let's keep our eyes on that as well. But let me just say this. Jesus told us, and commanded us to keep on the watch. And so as stewards of his word, or children of our Messiah, our job is to do what? To keep on the watch. Now, a lot of these things that we're watching, it's not good news. You know, people dying from diseases and major eruptions from earthquakes, or as you can see from the volcano in Hawaii, displacing many people and uh, horrific events that are taking place around the world, massive floods. By the way, all of these different things are signs of the last days, the birth pain signs to Jesus Christ, everything that I just mentioned to you. You'll see it in the scriptures. So at the same time as this is going on, this particular sign, 
we see in the Middle East, which is another major prophecy that is going to be fulfilled soon, that involves Turkey. Let me show you that one. Now, before I get to the significance of that article that I just showed you about Turkey, let me show you something very interesting from prophecy in the Bible concerning Turkey. And it has to do with Revelation chapter 17, verses 10 through 12. And it says this, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So this is a prophecy about the last days showing us the kingdoms of the world that were established and conquered each other over a period of time until the last days when this eighth kingdom, this eighth empire would arise again. And it was previously of the seven. So in other words, you have one empire that used to be in power. They disappeared and then they came back in the last days. And this power would be in power at the time that Jesus Christ would come back and squash all the world governments. Now, who is that? Well, when you take a look at the horns that are related to us in prophecy... And the horns, in this case, are governments, the, the world leaders, if you will, countries. And we know that at the time that John received this revelation from Jesus Christ, there had already been five of those kingdoms that had have already fallen away. Because John was living during the Roman Empire. So, we already saw Egypt, Syria, Babylon, Medo-Persian, the Greece, and the Roman Empire was in existence when John, the youngest apostle, was still living. So five had fallen, one is, just like the scripture tells us. And then it tells us, and the other is not yet come. And the Turkish Ottoman Empire, the eastern side of the old Roman Empire, did not come until after John the Apostle. When the western side of the Roman Empire fell, the Ottoman Empire took hold, and it lasted for a while. So, now that Turkey was part of the seven, as you see in the scripture, in Revelation chapter 17, Turkey would reemerge again as the eighth, making it fit with the Revelation chapter 17 because it is not yet come, and when he cometh, so Turkey is the only one that actually fits. And this is why I put this in my book, and this is why I'm watching it. Not only that, but the Lord revealed to us about the ten horns. And when you count the horns, or each nation, if you will, an empire, as a horn, take a look. You had one, two, three, four you had Greece that split into four different areas because when Alexander the Great died, his kingdom was, was spread out into four different kingdoms. So look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rome is nine. You have the last one, the eighth, being ten. So that even fits. So now you know the importance of why I'm watching what's going to happen with Turkey. And Turkey has evolved, and if you go into my book, and if you do Google search, you'll see that Turkey is the Ottoman Empire. They even state that they're bringing the Ottoman Empire back, just like we see in that Revelation scripture. So if Turkey is, in fact, that nation, now you know why it's important to watch what Turkey does, especially in relation to the nation of Israel. Now let me show you one of the examples of a news article that came out from the Arab News. This was back September 16th of 2009. Take a look at the headline, Turkey's New Role Examined. And when you read this article, it talks about the secular republic which has risen from the ashes of the Ottoman Empire. And there are a lot of other articles showing us that the Ottoman Empire run by Erdogan, is already coming back. 
So very significant in the news when we talk about relation to Bible prophecy and specifically those nations that are named in Scripture because we know from Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 that Turkey is going to be involved in a massive war against Israel. And when you see the rhetoric that's being spewed right now by Turkey, you'll understand the importance of what you just saw here from Revelation chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, and also Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Now, very briefly, let's go back to the article that I showed you in the beginning of this video that came out May 16th, and this was yesterday. You'll do again, Turkey will not allow Israel to steal Jerusalem from Palestinians. Now, you can read this article, you can Google the headline and read the entire article yourself, but this right here is the most important part of the entire article. And you'll see that in this report. It says, we will never allow Jerusalem to be stolen by Israel. This is the part that I just read to you. But notice here, it says, we will continue to be with our Palestinian siblings, not only with our hearts, but, get this, with all our resources. So if he's promising that he's not going to allow Jerusalem to be stolen by Israel, and he's going to use the resources. What resources is he talking about? Is it money? Is it troops? Well, according to the Bible, it would probably be both, using the resources to try to take the nation of Israel out, as we see in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. So now you understand why it's so important to watch what Udugan says. The rebirth of the Ottoman Empire on the rise and pointing directly to where they're supposed to be pointing, the destruction of the nation of Israel. And last week, as I mentioned many times now since last week, that Ordugan has called for a massive army to annihilate the nation of Israel. Is that a coincidence? No, it isn't. It was already written to us. We already know the future before it's going to happen. And this is why I'm trying to get this type of information out to so many people to get them ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Frank Moore of the End Times Research Ministry.